In the previous episode of the Specialized FSR Ground Control Restoration, we cleaned and polished the frame to rejuvenate the paint, and we tore down and serviced the linkage to reduce the stiction. In this episode, we're going to tear down the forks, uh, service them and see if the elastomers have melted, and we clean and prep all the parts ready for the rebuild. Now, I wasn't too sure how to undo these top caps of these forks. There's no hex features on them, but fortunately, they're just like kind of finger tight. They're tight, but you know, jam jar tight. Um, so they just uh, come undone with hand force. After that, you can pull off the uh, preload caps. With the top caps off, it's kind of the moment of horror and see what's inside. Uh, you just kind of raise the fork lowers to push the springs out and the elastomers rise. And by a miracle, nothing's melted. Uh, elastomers have a habit of either turning into a rubbery sand or just turning into a, a goo. Um, and it looks like these ones are intact. spring stacks are removed, we can flip the forks upside down, then remove these two bolts which hold on the lower legs. And again, we seem to be lucky, these forks seem to be in excellent condition, there's no goo or dust or signs of corrosion or muck or anything, just a tiny bit of grease I think. I've transferred all the parts over to my workbench here onto a clean microfibrous cloth so parts don't get contaminated. And I want to remove these compression rubs from the upper leg assembly, but first I have to remove these sort of bump stops at the very bottom. But this is where something slightly goes wrong and I can't quite understand what goes is happening here. So I can remove the right hand uh, compression rod no problem, I just kind of fish it out there with the help of an allen key. But the left hand compression rod has this like swaged on little aluminium feature that I can't quite work out how to un uh, unbolt from the compression rod. To me it looks like it's either bonded on or like heat staked onto the rod, so it doesn't look uh, like I can take it out. Whilst I mull over my decision what to do with that stuck compression rod, I move on to the lower legs and just give them a polish and clean up. You may have seen this in many of my other videos, but I use a combination of Autoglim Super Resin Polish and on these I use a little bit of tea cut as well just to make the red pop a bit better. There's still a couple of chips and scratches in them, but they're far from perfect, but they're perfectly adequate for what I need for this project. So after doing plenty of research online, I still can't quite figure out what's going on with this compression rod in the, uh, the left hand of the fork. So I thought I'd just try to lube up the inside of the fork around the compression rod by sneaking some grease in through the gap here. It's not a sealed gap, it's just you know, a clearance gap, almost like a bolt for a hole. Um, so I just keep working some grease in and moving the rod up and down to lubricate the, the top out bump around the bottom of the fork. If you know how to get this compression rod out without breaking it, um, please write in the comments and let me know because I'm very interested, I can't work it out myself. Moving on to the easily accessible compression rod now outside the fork, I just lube up the um, top out bumper there. There's not a very big bumper in this. Uh, it actually makes me a little bit worried. It's almost like two little tiny rubber washers. It's not very big at all. That's probably why you can feel a little bit of top out on the fork. I reinstall that, then just generally lube everything up to the max. I wipe plenty of grease in and around underneath the top of the fork seal in the lower legs. There's a little ledge under the seal itself in nearly all forks, and it's a great place to like have a reservoir of grease uh, to build up in the forks to keep them lubricated for a long time. And with the uppers and lowers thoroughly lubed up, it's time to insert them together. 
um, yeah just yeah, simple as that really and just try to make sure you're not catching the seal and it hasn't folded back on itself next we can insert the bolts back into the lower legs you got to remember these bolts hold the front wheel onto the bike and they're screwed into plastic rods not the best idea I don't think they're little brass inserts and plastic rods um, so yeah these forks handle with care really they're not really made for 21st century jumping in extreme mountain bike they're just made for pottering around as far as I'm concerned and gentle trails next job is to lube up the spring stacks uh, I'm gonna thoroughly lube them up because they look really dry um, again just using the same grease uh, make sure you use grease that's safe for elastomers like Judy butter or something along those lines and the last thing we need to do is reinsert these top caps onto the things this is a bit of a struggle because you kind of have to compress the spring a bit as you screw them in so just make sure you're not cross threading them because you're they're plastic and they're easily cross threaded so be sure that they've caught before you sort of winch them down by hand and they need to be hand tight because the thread pitch is quite fine for a big thread then just give them a clean rag to clean up all the excess grease and you're set to go that's the forks done and ready to reinstall Next we're going to move on to the wheels and give these cup and cone bearings a service. They're cup and cone on both the front and rear wheel. I just use a knife here to pry the, the big seal off uh, to get access to the, the cup and cones. Next we need to loosen this cup and cone pinch preload bolt. I'm placing all these parts into a magnetic tray just to make sure I don't lose them. Next we can remove this cone bolt off of the axle. Then we need to very carefully remove the axle from the hub body, uh, noting that all the bearings in here are loose and try not to lose them at this stage. The overall condition looks really good, I just need to clean and re-grease it and reassemble it all. I find the easiest way to remove these bearings is, is to fetch them out using a little magnet on a stick, that way they can't really run away and escape under a fridge or under something in your garage you'll never find them again. And I'm just going to remove all the old grease from the hub itself using some WD-40 and a microfiber towel. Next I load up the hub with a ton of fresh grease. And then I very carefully place all the bearings back in each side of the hub. That's why I put the grease in first, so the grease kind of holds the bearings in place at this stage. So it's better to grease first and add the bearings, and add the bearings, then add the grease. It's easier the first way around. With all the bearings in place we can carefully reinsert the axle. Try not to knock any bearings out of the stage, especially out the far end of the hub. I'm just going to try to re like use this lube that's been poked through from the end of the axle here. Reapply the cone next. washer and the preload nut. With the assembly complete we need to set the hub preload. This is done using the two cone spanners and adjusting the preload on the bearing so there's no slop in the system but the bearings run freely. With that set 
use the cone spanner to hold the cone still and lock up the setting using the preload nut. And the last thing to do is reapply the seals. One thing I did notice that needed addressing was there was a loose spoke, so I just nipped that up using a spoke key, then went around and checked the settings of the spoke tension across the other spokes and matched that using the park tool tension spoke meter majiggy tool thing on the bob. And that's the front wheel sorted. Moving on to the rear wheel, and it's a repeat of the same. It's a case of removing the seals, removing the axle, cleaning it all out, and adding new grease, inspecting everything, it looked great, so I'll kind of make a speedy montage for this one. Um, nothing was wrong, it was just service and uh, rebuild, and uh, it's ready to go back on the bike. So, moving on to the final chapter of this video, and it's cleaning all the components we're going to reuse. And um, there's no getting away, away from this, this is a really boring, dull job. All I use is I get an old washing up bulb that I plan to never put cutlery in ever again. I use uh, some wax free car shampoo and some really hot water and just scrub away. And that's it, there's no secret. Maybe a toothbrush and an old dish, um, dishwashing brush and just keep scrubbing uh, and eventually all the muck and grime and grease will come off. As you can see on the outer chain there it looked pretty disgusting before going in and five minutes of scrubbing and it looks pretty decent and the same happens with this uh, inner and middle ring. I didn't really do a good job of capturing all the grime and gunk on the inside of the chain set there where the chain rings live. Um, to be honest, <laughs> my fault, I just kind of got on with it and wanted to scrub it. So, But as you can see, it, like, it comes out pretty good. The cassette's next. I'm not sure if I'm going to reuse it, but a really good way to assess if it's overly worn. I don't think it is overly worn. It's just to make sure it's really clean and you can check out the condition of the teeth and if the ramps are damaged or if the, the surface coating has any damage. So yeah, again, get it really clean by scrubbing and scrubbing away. And to be fair, I really could use a second round of scrubbing on the cassette. It's still pretty tarnished in areas. The old Alex 8-speed rear derailleur is next in for scrubbing treatment. Next in for a bath is the front mech. For the intricate parts, I like to give them a squirt to WD-40 afterwards because it's hard to dry out all the nooks and crannies and it prevents prevent any uh, corrosion occurring from the water.
The final job we're going to do in this video is reassemble the chain set. Um, it's actually a bit of a fiddly job because of the hidden um, the hidden arm on the spider. It's kind of behind this crank arm. And it uses like a shorter a shorter chain ring bolt, but you have to put it through backwards. It was a bit of a fiddle, but I got there in the end. And I overdid Loctite because my Loctite's on its last leg, so it's squirting at the bottle. With every little puff, it's just blowing loads of it out. So um, that's about it. Thanks for watching, and um, I'll see you in the next video where there might be a few surprises in store for this bike. So uh, join me then. Thanks again. Cheers.